Hey, thanks for stopping by the channel. Today we've got an upgrade planned for our power wagon. We're gonna change out our 4GX OTR WeBoost antenna for the brand new 5G WeBoost antenna. Stick around. So what's the reason for the upgrade? Why would we change from the 4GX OTR? Well, this thing boasts a 50 decibel gain. That's the maximum allowable gain by the FCC. What does that mean in terms of user performance? They're claiming that this thing will actually get a signal 75 or 74% further than the 4G XOTR. Is it true? We don't know yet. But we're gonna install this one right next to our 4G XOTR in the truck, and then we're gonna test them out and find out if there's actually that much of a difference. So on the outside, you have your typical WeBoost uh, packaging, uh, very nice packaging. Shows on the side how the booster works. Get reliable signal, 5G ready. It says maximum gain, 50 decibels. And it's multiple devices. Pulls off like a big sleeve. So. You have everything that you need for your installation. Installation overview. Some adhesive Velcro strips. This is the power charging block. One thing that is different about this one as opposed to the 4G XOTR is the 4G one just had a switch on the back. This one actually has a USB charger and an activation button to turn it on and off. That's kind of a nice upgrade. Um, this is made for over the highway trucks, so as standard they give you the good old fashioned CB style aluminum clip on that would go on to the exterior mirrors. The control box is really hefty. This is aluminum. The old one is plastic and it is quite beefier and quite a bit larger. So there must be a lot more technology in this and looks like they did a lot for uh, cooling with these aluminum fins. Your inside antenna looks pretty much the same as the other one. It might be just slightly smaller. Over here, some Loctite, the adapter for the antennas. These right here are antenna mat, antenna mask extensions. Um, these are actually blacked out completely on the 4G X OTR. These were stainless here, and then like a carbon fiber finish on the shaft. And the biggest change besides the control box is the shape of the antenna. It's no longer the round can, it's more of a hexagonal antenna. So I'm guessing that the majority of that signal boosting is coming from this and then of course the technology that's in that box. Um, very easy to understand instructions on the 4G XOTR, they basically had these components labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so you knew what um, series to put them or install them in. This one here, pretty much the same thing. Step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it kind of gives you a diagram of what it should look like in your vehicle. And then, of course, on the back, a warranty card. You take a picture of this and you can email it or text it directly to WeBoost and it registers your WeBoost antenna system. And just for reference sake, I'm gonna show you the components of the 4G XOTR. Here's the exterior antenna and the control box or control module, as you can see, is also completely different than the new 5G drive reach OTR. Um, this is plastic construction, much thinner, takes up a lot less space, so I'm kinda of interested to see how much more space the 5G is gonna take up. The power adapter that plugs into the cigarette lighter looks just like this. Notice it doesn't have that USB port on the back of it like the new one. And it's a simple on off toggle switch. And then the antenna, we actually have ours mounted right in front of our dome lamp, is pretty much the exact same size it looks like. So the first thing we need to do on our particular application is we're gonna take the rear seat out of the truck. So just to be clear, you don't have to take the rear seat out of your vehicle to install this. It's not a requirement. You can honestly run it out a window, run it out the door, plug it into your 12 volt outlet, stick your antenna on the side of your seat, and then mount the rear or the exterior antenna outside somewhere, and you're good to go. 
the system's gonna work perfectly. The only reason I'm taking it out in this truck is this is how we installed the last one. And I kinda wanted to give you guys an inside uh, look at how we did that to run everything nice and clean so we can still util utilize all of our storage areas and not have wires dangling all over the place. This is not a requirement to install this unit. It is very, very simple to set up and very simple to use. But this is how we're gonna do it on our truck. So our truck is a 2007 Dodge 2500 Power Wagon. Pretty much the exact same steps for the entire Ram lineup if you wanted to do it this way. To take the rear seats out, obviously first we fold up the rear bench and we have four mounting bolts that at attach this bracket to the floor. To get to the front bolts, you flip this lid up. I'm using an 18 millimeter wrench or socket. And we're gonna pull these out. Something to note on the Dodge Chrysler products. If you've never taken the seat bolts out before, you're gonna find out that they are a pain in the butt to take out. This gray area on the bolt right here, that is actually Loctite. And they use a lot of it on these, bolt, on these seat bolts. They wanna make sure that that seat is firmly affixed to the vehicle. So if they feel really tight, they are. So with the four bolts for the seat removed, I'm gonna climb in here. And the backrest basically just has little catches on the back. So we're gonna lift straight up on the seat and hopefully pull it right on out. Just like that. These are the anchors for the seat backrest on the back wall of the truck. And those basically catch right here. So those come right in the side of that. With the seat removed, now we have access to the back wall. This right here is just a sound insulation barrier. This would be for tying off a child seat. And we're going to take this loose so we can get to the vent that's actually behind this panel. So in order to do this, I'm gonna use a trim tool. You can use a, pla uh, a pocket screwdriver or a regular flat blade screwdriver for this. This clip right here actually has a jaw that kind of comes over and grabs onto a bar. And I'll show you here in just one second. But what we're gonna do is stick this behind it and we're gonna pry up on the top piece to release that catch. Just like that. So there's the jaw that I was referring to right here. And that basically just goes on to a little bar, almost like this. And it hooks into it. So you're just gonna pry up on that top piece. This one right here is a Christmas tree style one. Same thing with the trim tool, you can get behind it and start working it free. The other thing you can use if you don't have a trim tool is a pair of dykes, a pair of wire cutters. You just gotta be careful not to squeeze in on it and cut the head off. So if you stick that behind it and start kind of prying away from the wall, same thing, pulls it right out. Now to get the rest of this, we're just gonna kinda grab it and feed it out. Pull it around this panel over here, just be careful with it because it'll tear easily. Pull that buckle down. And now we have access to the back wall here. And I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second. So here's the trim panel pulled back. Like I said, you can just see it's just insulation that's been molded and bonded and then it's got a little bit of foam on it. And then right here, this is the vent that I was referring to on the back of the cab. There's actually one on this side and one on the passenger side of the vehicle. And the sole purpose of this vent is to let the pressure inside the cab escape when you close the doors with the windows up. That air has to go somewhere otherwise it'd blow a window out. So the way these work is there's just a little rubber flap in there. 
So as the door slams closed, pressure pushes this open on all these, lets the air escape. It's also a really good place to run cables in from the exterior of the vehicle. So you can see we have our antenna right there, and that's actually running all the way down, down into that vent. I'm running along the back of the wall over to the control box. And that's exactly where we're gonna run our new one. A word of warning I will give you before you mount your antenna is know how tall you want your antenna to be. You're gonna have to pre-plan on this one a little bit. This cable actually threads, you can see the end right here, that end threads through these adapter tubes. See the uh, light at the end of the tunnel there? And they are different sizes, as you can see. And then this one here threads onto the bottom of the one that you use, and then the cable feeds through this one as well, but then comes out the side right here. So it's important to know before you start running the cable into the cab of the truck or whatever vehicle you're installing this on as to how tall you want it to be. And a prime example right here, the 4GX OTR does the exact same thing. You can see right there where the cable comes out that little flute and it now becomes exterior. Up to that point, it's running right through that shaft. To assemble the antenna, we're going to take our antenna, we're going to find the end, just like this. We're going to take the little rubber end off of it, and then we select the tube that we're going to use. We're going to use the short one, and you're just going to feed this coupling down through the tube. Till it comes out the other side just like that. Once you get your cable fed through your tube you get to this point here. Probably not necessary but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to take one of the supplied tubes of blue Loctite, put a little dab on the threads of the antenna here. And then cap it back off. And we'll just make this snug. Then we're going to do the same thing with this fitting here. We're going to insert this from the top side and pull it through just like so. We're going to run that all the way to the base of the antenna. We're going to do the exact same thing here. Put a little bit of Loctite on the threads, thread this on. All right. And that is our antenna assembled. The only th parts that we have next are the mount, and then it does come with a spring assembly. And this would just basically mount into this piece here, like so. And then you would mount this end on the bottom of the antenna, so that way if you catch anything with the antenna, it's just going to flex back and spring back into position, hopefully not damage the antenna. So far, it's worked very well on our 4GX OTR. Now like I said before, mounting location is going to differ depending on your application and your vehicle. On ours, we decided to do this side-by-side -side mounting mainly because we're going to be testing the abilities of these two antennas and seeing what the difference is between them. Like I said, the 5G, they're claiming that it gets 75% more distance than the 4G does. And we really want to test that out. And really the only way I could figure out to pull this off is have them in a similar location uh, side by side to get the best test. We're gonna mount the antennas inside the truck side by side, the boxes side by side, so it's gonna be the complete same configuration. Um, but this was the only way we could get the antennas to mount side by side um, without damaging them, um, just in case we strike a branch or anything like that. Because we do wanna put these through the full test. As I said earlier, we're going to bring our cables up just like we did over here. So in order to do that, there's these little push tabs. We're going to push these up and kind of pop this back out. I guess so I'm going to need a tool here. Just like that. Now if I push it all the way in, it's going to fall down, so we're trying to be careful with that. These two clips are the only thing that are retaining that. 
but right now I have enough room to snake these wires through. So now I'm going to go on the outside of the vehicle and run the antenna cable up. So our cable's pulled through. Remember to leave enough slack on the back side if you're gonna do it this way, so the cables can move back and forth independent of the, the bed and the cab. And now we're just going to pull this panel back forward and engage these clips. And if you run into one that's being a pain, a little persuasion may be necessary. There we go. With the cable ran into the cab, we're gonna coil it up like this and then we're going to start to feed it underneath this insulation right here all right so we got the cable fished over and our outside connection the adapter is a push-on style plug with a threaded end and a coax in the center of it so what we do with that so we'll thread this onto this piece here, like so. And then we just insert it into the plug like that. And that's ready to go. As you can see, our old antenna is mounted up here on the headliner. And to do that, you pull the dome lamp out. So you just pop this open, just like you're gonna change a bulb out. This pulls down actually has a latching mechanism that's how it actually stays up in there when you this closes it pushes in on this side of the headliner and holds it down um, if you want to do this type of setup on yours it's not that difficult um, the only thing you do have to do is right here you can see I notched it just a little bit you just use a round file to do that or a razor blade and that allows the cable to come out so I'm going to run the new antenna out the exact same spot and right next to this so I'm gonna have to feed it up through the headliner. In order to feed the cable through the headliner here I need to take off this pillar trim or at least take it loose and in order to do that we have to take this grab handle off so we're gonna use a screwdriver stick it behind the plastic same thing on the bottom and then there are two bolts in there and I believe they're 10 millimeters Okay, and then just pull the handle off just like that and then take the trim off just stick your fingers behind it and you can pop it down like that and then to get to the headliner you can just pull the outside door molding trim down like that now we've got access to run that cable through and it's very possible that you're gonna have to use some type of uh, wire fishing tool to do that or a coat hanger or something just be careful not to puncture the headliner. With our fish tape strung through the headliner and hanging out the door here, we're going to attach the cable for the interior antenna. And if you notice, I've taken the red bumper off or the red cap off of the one that we use for the exterior antenna and stuck it on this. That prevents anything from getting shoved down in there and damaging that contact. So we're going to take some electrical tape here and we're going to tape this cable to our fish line and pull it through. Just like that. And start feeding this through. It may be necessary to pull down on the headliner just a little bit. Just like that. Okay, so now I've got the other end outside the door here. And just keep feeding it. All right, so here's my antenna. 
Now, what is kind of nice about the new system here, this 5G system, is they've actually written on the one side of the antenna, mounting side. With the 4G OTX, they didn't do that. And based on that, if you hold them side by side to see which way they are, I actually had mine mounted backwards. If they're the same style antenna. So that's something I need to note as well and correct. So I'll have to move my Velcro to the other side. But I'm going to mount this the exact same way. So this is going to get mounted right here and the old one is going to be mounted right there. So that way we can do a true comparison test of these two systems and find out how much of a difference there really is between them. To mount our antenna, we're going to use the alcohol prep pad and then we're going to use some of the Velcro that's supplied in the kit. There's two different types of Velcro that's supplied. This is the 3M 300 LSE and it sticks to the overhead uh, headliner here a heck of a lot better than the other one does. These Dodge headliners and these newer vehicles, uh, they don't really, uh, Velcro really doesn't stick too well to them. So it, just play around with the different types of Velcro that you have. And uh, if that's where you're gonna mount it, just see which one sticks better to it. Um, I believe WeBoost actually recommends installing this on the side of the seat right here. Um, but honestly, we found that working on the headliner seems to be the best. Um, that way we have good Wi-Fi, or excuse me, good cell reception to both front passengers and both rear passengers in the vehicle. We're gonna apply our Velcro adhesive here on the side that says mounting side, just like that. Press it on there really well. And then just like the other one that I still need to change the Velcro on, we're gonna mount this up like this. Probably right in that vicinity. And then we just give it a little wiggle and that usually helps it stick to the newer headliners a little bit better. And then we can just pull a little bit of that slack over through the door and I'll get this all put back together and we'll finish up the install here. All right, so what I had to do this time, this cable appears to be a little bit shorter than the old 4G X OTR cable. So I've got it run down the same channel and I've got it pulled up underneath this panel, but it wouldn't reach all the way around the back. So what I'd done is take this Christmas tree clip right here out, which goes right here, pull the carpet back, run the cable through there underneath this panel here, and then we're gonna have to mount the control module right in front of the old one. So now that I got that cable up here, we're gonna pull the little red cap off, and then that's gonna go into the inside antenna side. This one does not require an adapter, it's already got the fitting on it, so we just plug that in like that. And then we're gonna set this probably right back in here somewhere, and it comes with adhesive Velcro that we can put on the bottom, or you can take this bracket off and screw it on, but I think what I'm going to do is apply some Velcro to this, stick it to this carpet, and then we'll clip it in for the time being. So our power cord has been run around the back here, and all we need to do is insert it into the power jack right there, and now we can go press the button and test to see if this actually works. Our green power LED is lit, indicating that the system is now functioning. It's gonna cycle here a couple times until it gets signaled. And now we're lit 100% green. So the system should be working now. So that's a look at how to install the 5G WeBoost. Hopefully you guys got something from this video. It's kinda of nice to see the components in place and kinda of how they install. I'm gonna finish putting this truck back together and watch out for the next video. We'll be uh, back 
with probably a vlog update of some sort telling you guys what our experiences were with the new WeBoost. We'll see you guys next time.